Hi. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. We are talking about secure digital identity. And uh, well, in the beginning, it was a concept. What is identity? Identity are traits that make you unique. It's the sense of a being and it, it's what makes you what you are. So in the physical world, identity is uh, very easy to perceive because there are many traits like hair, face, eyes, or uh, height that uh, makes you easy to recognize. When you need to go anywhere, you have the credentials to travel, to go to the gym or whatsoever. So in the physical world, uh, identity uh, is perceived through presence and through behavior when you interact with, uh, with other humans. And this is quite different in the digital world because in the digital world, only activity is perceived. Something you post in a blog or, do, or do, uh, post in a social network. Um, and what do you need to get there? Just use a password, OTP, uh, a certificate or a digital wallet. And then uh, what uh, that means? As the interaction on the online world uh, are more common and cover more aspects of our lives, there is a, a rising interest for fraudsters uh, to have uh, the identity of a person to get uh, their bank account, their credentials, uh, to their access to, I don't know, backend systems of a company. So uh, uh, phishing, scam, some um, social, uh, sorry, <laughs> and even um, uh, some, uh, some deep fakes are tried to, uh, to get the identity of the, of the person. And this is only in the, in the user side because in the company and the provider side, there are other threats like, for instance, a cold injection or a, a, a stolen credentials. And um, so let's see what's important in an in a, in identification scheme. No matter if we are talking about being a, a customer to a gym or we are going to get a digital certificate, the first thing we need to do is get through an identity proving process where we go to an identity proven service provider and uh, we show that we are what we, what we claim to be. And this is a very interesting process because this person can be the same person that is going to give us the credential or uh, is a different person. So the system is federated, can be federated, sorry. So once we get, I don't know, to the gym, we, we saw our ID uh, and the guy uh, gives the, give us the opportunity to become a customer. Uh, we go the other part of the process. Someone decides that yes, we have the ID mean. The ID mean is either the key of, to access to the gym or the digital certificate. So that this is uh, something that tells that we are what we claim to be. It's a, it's a core of the, uh, of the identity uh, scheme. And it can be as secure as a certificate or very, very soft. Something like a key that I can handle to anyone and anyone can get into, the, into this activity. The last part is once I have the identity mean is I want to access. And this is what is called authentication process, right? Uh, for instance, when uh, as we as a, tra a trust service provider uh, that, that delivers uh, certificates, 
our certificates is not only for us to enter in our uh, tools. Uh, it can be used for other third parties. So we have a federated um, scheme, right? So uh, let's see how different schemes are fit in, in different frameworks. For instance, if we talk about EIDAS framework, we have different levels of assurance in the ID mean, right? And it can be low, which we are not very certain if the person is who claims to be. Substantials, we are pretty sure that this guy is what he claims to be. Or uh, high, which means we are absolutely sure that this person is what he claims to be. And in the NIST, uh, remember the, the three parts of the systems we already seen, um, there is a different identity assurance levels, authentication assurance levels, and federation assurance levels. If we, if we get deeper in the EIDAS framework, we have, of course, the regulation, which is the, you know, <laughs> the first step. If, and if we drill down, we have the implementing regulation, which uh, defines the three level of assurance that we, uh, we already mentioned. The ETC uh, 401, which is for general uh, management, and, for, uh, and the 461, which is specific for the identity proofing uh, procedure. What, what, is, what says the Article 24 of the EIDAS in this initial wording? Very, very simple to understand. It says, if you want to go through an identi a secure identity proofing process, one thing you can do is having the person there. Another thing you can do is using a secure identity mean to identify this person. And well, last, last but not least, you can do it at home with uh, your, with your um, national scheme, but you need to be certified but, uh, but something which is in the IDAS uh, framework, which is a CAD, right? So, if we go to the Spanish framework, what do we have? Of course, on top, EIDAS regulation. Then there's a law which covers different aspects. One of them is, is, is the identity, remote identity proofing, which is regulated by the, the order ATD 465. And this, uh, this order mentions a technical um, requirement issued by the Centro, Centro Criptológico Nacional, which is very technical and also um, puts requirements that can be covered over the NIS scheme. So that, in a nutshell, what do we have? In an ID scheme, you need an ID mean, which is the core of the, of the system. We have ID means that are EIDAS certified because we use ISU uh, <laughs> qualified certificates. We have secure procedures, which are uh, certified by CAPS in the EIDAS scheme. Uh, we also have tools, secure tools that are in the process of certification in the, with the Centro Criptológico Nacional. And Last but not least, we have a general procedures to control and do risk management under the uh, uh, 27001 ISO. And this is very important also because remember, I told you before, we have the user part, the threats in the user part, and also the threats in the provider part. In, in the, in Europe,
Um, ISO is quite comprehensive, but if you go deeper, there are another uh, frameworks on top of that. For instance, we have the in, in Spain the uh, Esquema Nacional de Seguridad to to both uh, with services with a public administration, which is very important because gives you when you when you have the ISO, you are almost there, but you need something on top. And this is something also related with this. Um, the previous NIS uh, directive uh, of cyber security uh, didn't include trust service provider, but now the new one, which is already published and uh, which uh, uh, entered, in, entered in force in 2024, uh, trust service providers are there. So if you think about uh, secure identity, you need to take into account that um, the breaches have real consequences for real persons in real world. So you need to trust in someone who has the, the ID means, the procedures and the tools to make you, to give you a secure skin with your customers. <laughs> Do you have any other question? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your attention. If you want uh, uh, to get around and see our solutions, we are open and we can, can, can offer you a coffee. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>